Hello, Flosstube friends. It's been a minute. It's the beginning of March, and I last checked in with you guys, oh, the beginning of October. Things have been a little crazy around here. I, um, I'm in a bit of a state of a bit of disarray right now, so I thought, um, rather than have nothing to look at while I talk to you, I would just put my kitchen project down <laughs> for you to look at. This is Sue Hilla's Calories Don't Count at Christmas. I think this is pretty close to where you saw it the last time. There might be a little bit more um, backstitching done in the words. I keep this project in my kitchen for when I have a minute down here. And uh, it's also my purse project because it's pretty easy to stitch in hand. It's got a nice loose weave. So what has been going on? Well, the newborn stage really kicked my butt. Um, whoever coined the phrase sleep like a baby, you're a jerk. <laughs> Everyone told me that all newborns do all day is sleep. Well, not my kid. Um, we had, uh, we had a really hard time for the first four or five months. Um, my daughter has multiple pretty severe food intolerances and, um, some GI issues. She's, she's, she's a healthy baby. Um, but she had some GI issues and some food intolerances that had her in pain and took us a while to figure out and, uh, get her medication dose squared away. And because she was in pain, um, she really could not be put down on her back like ever. She hated being on her back. She hated being in the stroller. She hated being in the crib, you know, um, the swing. Really, she needed to be held upright pretty much constantly, um, including when she slept at night. So we had a pretty rough go of it where we were holding her in shifts pretty much all night um, for, for a couple months there um, from about two months old until four months old, we were holding her upright, um, overnight and taking turns sleeping. And it was pretty brutal. <laughs> I did find some time during that to stitch and knit, but the, the limited amount of time I had for those things, I wanted to actually be stitching and not on my phone. So I didn't get a whole lot of vlogging done, and I certainly wasn't in the mood to put together some videos and edit them. Um, but I have recorded a series of clips to catch you up on everything I've been working on, and I'm going to share those with you now. So here's what I've worked on since I last saw you. So in October, I think I started this around the first week of October after I finished Hey There Pumpkin by Hands On Design. I worked on Summer House Stitchworks Sister Suffragette. I did not do the buttons, I only did the fist part of the chart, the votes for a woman. I used all the call for DMC, there's only four colors. And I believe this is 28 count mushroom Lugana. The tag is missing, but I'm fairly certain this is mushroom. Uh, two over two. It was a fairly simple and quick stitch, which was good because I had kind of a crazy month. I finished this on election night while we were watching the results come in, or what we thought were, were going to be the results. Of course, we didn't get the final tally until several days later. But I was hoping to finish this by election day or election night, and I managed to squeeze it in. I. The called for, um, excuse me, the, the original chart only has 1920 and 2020 to celebrate the centennial of women getting the vote. Of course, we know that only white women got the vote in 1920. So um, I copied Julie, Kansas City Girl in a Colorado World and um, copied how she added in 1965 for the um, Voting Rights Act of 1965, which, you know, between 1920 and 1965, of course, there were there were multiple laws passed giving different minority groups the right to vote, but 
the the big one in 1965 is what gave uh, voting rights to everyone, to all women. So I included that date in there and I just copied what Julie did for placement. Of course, we still have issues with voter suppression today. If you're interested, I watched over the summer an excellent documentary, which um, my, uh, you know, when I was in college, I was in a sorority and they have been doing some really cool things during COVID where they've been sending us virtual events and screenings that we can take part of. And, and one of the ones they offered over the summer was for a documentary called Capturing the Flag. Um, I will link information to it in this video. It is a short documentary, I believe it's less than an hour, and it's about voter protection volunteers in the 2016 election and the voter suppression they saw in just one community in North Carolina. Um, so, so it's about only two or three people going to volunteer to help people vote. Um, it's a nonpartisan, they're nonpartisan volunteers. They go to help people vote in, in communities where they believe that there's voter suppression going on and they went to this small community in North Carolina and it, it kind of really opened my eyes to how in some areas it can actually be very difficult for people to vote. Um, there are many people who showed up ready to vote and were turned away for um, for kind of really strange reasons. Um, and in any case, I, you know, I mean, it's, it's not about this election, it's about the 2016 election, but I believe it's still a problem in many areas. And um, I'll link it below if you're interested, if you have a minute to kind of check it out. I believe that they have had and are continuing to have um, free online viewing sessions. So you can watch it at home. Okay, the heater just kicked on. I hope you can hear me okay. I received some comments in my last video that the sound quality wasn't great. I think that comes from recording onto my iPhone and not from my webcam. I believe I have fixed the problem, but if not, um, don't be shy. Please do let me know here how it sounds to you. I edit with headphones in and it sounds okay in my headphones, but maybe it doesn't sound okay on your speakers. And if that's the case, you should let me know so I can try and figure out how to fix it. I may need to purchase some sort of microphone or something if I continue to do this vlogging style until I'm able to uh, find time to get in front of my actual webcam again, which won't be for a few, few more months, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> so after I finished Sister Suffragette, from the beginning of November until the end of the year, I believe I FFO'd it on January 1st, I worked on a Christmas gift for my in-laws. So what I wanted to do was do a stitched version of the building they own. They own a small, um, they own a building in Brooklyn and in that building, they have a small art gallery. They've had it there for many years. They're pretty much retired now and it's very much by appointment, appointment only, but um, you know, I'll put their website below if you wanna check out some of their artwork and stuff. So what I did was I used Country Cottage Needleworks Main Street Art Gallery. I used that building and I heavily modified it to look like my in-laws building. So I'll insert a picture here of what the original Country Cottage Needleworks design looks like. And then I'll also, also show you um, some of the reference photos I used for my in-laws building. I was trying to capture it at a previous moment in time. The building no longer really looks like this exactly but my husband wanted me to capture a specific year. So I'll insert that photo here and um, perhaps do a side-by-side -side of my version of their building. So you can see I added, you know, another level. I moved the windows, I added a door. I just made a lot of changes. You might've seen me post about this in Stitch Mania the day I went to FFO this project, I went to iron it and I went to go mist it very lightly with best press. Um, my hand slipped and I, I, I like had the nozzle turned wrong or something. I, somehow I ended up with a huge, huge pool of best press right in the middle of the project on top of the red floss. 
Um, the Red Floss is a Weeks color and it's an older skein, so it wasn't color fast and it bled so badly. So I was freaking out because I was trying to get this done, you know, to give to them the next day and it had just bled everywhere. So I posted on Stitch Mania about it. Um, I tried to clean the area a little bit with a Q-tip and some water. I tried a little bit of uh, Resolve stain remover, which I don't know, hopefully that doesn't destroy the work over time. It's not an archival piece, that's fine. It's not a big deal. <laughs> um, I don't expect the piece to last for 50 years, but um, that didn't super work. I posted on Stitch Mania asking people for suggestions and what it, I ended up doing was tweaking the sign and I added a little over one bird to try and cover the worst of the bleeding. And I ripped out all the white and restitched it because all the white, of course, had turned pink from the bleeding. And I think, um, and here's a photo of what it looked like, totally finished. And I think, I think it turned out pretty good. You know, they, they couldn't tell certainly. And um, they were just excited about so many of the other details in the piece. The artwork on the first floor there, I tried to, um, I tried to chart and, and reproduce some of my mother-in-law's um, pieces to put in the window there. So I'll kind of insert some photos there of the ones I tried. It turned out okay. It's hard, it's hard to do abstract art, um, even over one. You know, there's only so many squares and it was really difficult to kind of get the full piece to come across. But um, I'm not sure if she could tell, but I think I, I think it turned out all right. So yeah, a lot of love went into this piece and I'm very happy with how it turned out. So there are three numbers drawn for January. The free space was drawn and then two other numbers. And so one of one of the projects I that was drawn for me was Sampler Story by Brenda Keys. And my goal for this for the year was to do one week on it. And uh, so I did, I did a week's worth of work on it. I didn't get a whole lot completed. I'll insert a picture here of where it was at the beginning of the week or the last time you saw it. And uh, so this is, this is where I'm at now. So I think I completed, there's like a couple stitches to complete in this block. And I might have done some border and then I worked on this road and the dog and started the house and uh, filled in a little bit of these people here. So not a whole lot complete, but I did work on it for a week and that completes my goal for the year. I think, um, this is a very large project. I do not anticipate getting much more complete on it this year. And I think I am going to temporarily, I'm torn. Um, on one hand, this is a great travel project like for retreats and um, going on vacation and stuff because even though these blocks are large and there's a lot of colors involved, um, the border is easy to work on while talking to people. And um, cause, you know, it's just kind of straight, straight stitches and, um, you know, that the stitching itself is fairly simple. There's no fiddly bits. So it is a good kind of travel piece. Um, however, there's a lot of DMC tied up in this project. And I'm thinking that for some of my projects this year, after I complete my goals on them, I'm going to unkit them and put the DMC back in my floss box because I'm, I'm tired of pulling out projects and finding that I have projects that were previously fully kitted or missing thread because I've moved them to something else. So I think um, projects that are super large and will not be complete anytime soon, I'm going to maybe unkit and set aside once I hit my yearly goal on them and I will re-kit and revisit them at later dates. Um, I am not particularly worried about dye lot issues with DMC, especially since it doesn't really matter if the only dye lot color that matters is this border and I don't think the color is dark enough for that to really be an issue. Um, especially since this project was started with all new threads. It's not like I used some threads from like the 90s or something. So um, I think I'm going to temporarily unkit this just to get the DMC back. January 16th to 21st, I worked on what I consider to be my inauguration day project. This is a sampler in the book, Traditional Samplers by Brenda Keys. This is the Margaret Simcock sampler and I'm making a lot of changes to it. 
I started this in September and the last time you saw it, well, first of all, look at how I stored this in my project bag, basically it crumpled up into a ball. So, yep, I'm not gentle with my things. I'm the worst. It's a big, one of my hairs on it, gross. So this is, this is what I got done the last time you saw it. If you'll recall, I started this one over one on this 36 count piece of 36 count truffle by Picture This Plus. And because my cut wasn't big enough to do a two over two and I was not loving how it looked. So I ordered a larger piece of fabric. And I don't think that came before I, before I finished my video. I think that didn't come until October. So I've gotten quite a lot done on it since I last saw you. I pulled this out. I didn't do all of this in January. I pulled this out a little bit in December when I had some time and restarted it and I worked on it for that week in January and I also got um, a week on it in February because it was called for WIPCO in February. So pull back a little so you can see. So I've gotten the border, the green leaves almost all the way around. I hope they're gonna meet up. As you can see, I have really changed the colors from the original. You can see a little bit about that in my reasoning and the colors I chose in my September video. The information's all in there. So um, because I'm using Dinky Dye's Oops and Oops Pack to stitch this, I was concerned about running out of thread. So that's why instead of, you know, the original chart has berries around between all the leaves, I've been alternating because I figure if I run out of these pink colors, as long as I make it all the way around every other one, I can just use a different color or a different dye lot in the alternating spaces and it will look like it's on purpose. But honestly, um, I'm a lazy person and if it looks okay alternating every other one, I might not even go in and fill in those other, I guess, berries or flowers. I think they're supposed to be roses. Um, so I've gotten almost all the way around with the outer vine, I've gotten across with this vine here. There's little leaves that go on here. I've got one squirrel done and the start of this flower here. And then I started a little bit on the grass down here. So I've gotten quite a bit done. I'm kind of hoping to finish this one this year. I'm really enjoying stitching on it. I love the colors. It's the lighting isn't so great today, so you can't tell, but this this fabric looks it always looks brown on camera, but in person it's a lot more pink looking. So I'm really happy with um, the pinks and the greens in this and how everything's coming together. What is gonna make it an inauguration day sampler? Well, I haven't settled yet on the I'm gonna change the verse up here. <clears throat> Excuse me, I haven't settled yet on what I'm gonna change it to. I have a couple ideas. But I'll share those, you know, I'll, I'll share with it with you when I know what I'm doing. I'm going to change the skin tone on these ladies here. I'm going to make some changes to the house um, to make it look like the White House. Uh, to kind of commemorate the first female VP. And my hope is to change the verse to kind of commemorate some of the things that happened in 2020 in regards to the Black Lives Matter movement. Um, there's a couple different poems and quotes about equality and justice I'm considering. I just haven't really settled on which one exactly. And my ideas are evolving on this. So. Um, and I think I might also change this flower down here. There's another flower in this book. Um, I don't know if I can find it right now. There's another. Sorry. Anyway, there's another um, flower pot with roses in this book that I like better than this motif, so I might swap the motifs out. I think they're roughly the same size. So basically, I'm changing almost all of it. 
I don't know, like I might not do all the little motifs so the text doesn't fit. I don't know what I'm gonna put here. Maybe I'll stick a couple motifs in, I, I don't know. Plans are evolving, so we'll see. But I'm, I'm really happy with how it's turning out so far and I'll be really thrilled to get the border finished. The border hasn't been too monotonous to work on. It's actually been kind of great because I don't have to look at the chart. I can just look, you know, a couple rows up at what I've been doing. So I hope it connects. The second project that was called for me for January was the Isle of Hope Sampler by Jeanette Douglas. I, this was a new start. I started it this year because this year in September, actually, a few weeks before my daughter was born, I finally submitted my application for US citizenship. I became eligible in September and opted to submit my application right away because the cost was going to be increased in October. So um, I do not anticipate I received a notification very recently that they received my application, but I do not anticipate um, having my application approved until 2022. I know that they are very behind. Um, um, ideally, I would like to finish this before my application is approved. I anticipate that to take at least a year, so maybe I'll have time. We'll see. My goal for this project for the year is to complete six bands, so that would be down to the bottom of this. Um, clock and key section here. I think that's doable because specialty stitches go much quicker than cross stitches sometimes. Um, I did not, I only worked a couple days on this in the end of January, so I did not complete my goal yet, but I did complete this little steamship up here and get a start on the border. So I'll show you what I have. This is stitched one over two on 40 count Swigart linen um, in the colorway light mocha. I'm using the call for threads. I, I received the thread pack for this project for Christmas um, uh, for my husband. So um, these are all silks in here. It's like a teeny tiny steamship. I'll see if I can get closer. This border is like a wool, a variegated wool thread. Um, I can tell you the color if you're interested. The thread pack didn't come sorted, so it took almost like a full afternoon. I made these like quick and dirty color cards um, to sort all the threads because the thread pack, it just they just came kind of balled up in a, in a bag. Um, and so it took a minute to figure out, you know, what was what. Um, but that is my start on the Isle of Hope, and I will be pulling this out again at least a, one more time this year to try and uh, complete my goal of six bands. So the projects called in February for WITGO were the Brenda Key sampler that I showed you earlier. And the second project that was called was Needles and Pins by Theron Traditions. I am selling this with Julie, the Long Dog Stitcher, Seems So Vintage, um, Shelly Key X Stitch, Candace Slup Lover Stitches. You can totally sell along with us. Um, However, you should know that I am the worst about starting a sal and then completely ghosting it and barely picking up the project. So um, feel free to start it and complete it before I even pull this out again. So this was called for February and I did a week on it. I'll insert a picture here of where you saw it the last time. And, you know, I got a little bit done. I started this flower over here and then figured out I was missing one of the other colors for this flower and got annoyed. I Every time I pull this project out, I am missing at least two or three DMCs for it, which is super annoying. I know I bought all the colors I needed in August for this chart that we're missing. Um, and yet every time I pull it out, I can't find one of the colors I need. It's part of that is because it calls for so many different DMC colors that I'm consistently pulling them out of this project bag to use on something else. Um, part of it is that I am an unorganized mess. So, yep, I gave up on this flower and then I decided to do this strawberry up here, which I did. I did um, some of the green border here and I started the over one text. So I have two-ish weeks left in February after completing my February goals for Whipgo. 
And I decided with those two free weeks to try and make some progress on a project that I could conceivably finish um, in this year. Um, so I decided to try and do some work on the um, Fairy School or Sunny Days Smalls that I started last year for Mania. So the last time you saw this, I had completed the Seagull, um, the Lighthouse, and the Crab. And then um, in those two weeks, um, stitching time, not a lot of stitching time, uh, but there, there was some stitching time, so I was able to get the sailboat done and I have nearly completed the flag. I just need to finish the back stitching over here. The actual blocks of these piece, pieces inside does not take very long. Um, what does take some time is the back stitching. It's a little bit fiddly. Um, with this one I had, uh, you know, because I'm using this white fabric and you can see through, I don't want to carry threads, but then I'm having a little bit of difficulty anchoring threads. Um, no matter how many times I like try and anchor the threads or um, I try and pin stitch with the back stitch, but it, it, I'm having difficulty where they keep pulling out. I don't know if I'm just not being patient enough or thorough enough tucking my loose thread ends in, but I'll do a star and move on and then go back and it will be pulling out. I'll have to rip it out and redo, re redo part of it in order to tuck the ends back in. I still I had that problem with the waves too. So the back stitching on, on these is a, a little bit fiddly and it's, it's only going to get fiddlier. Um, like this one and, and this one specifically are going to be a little bit irritating, but I have, um, have made some progress on those nine total and I have nearly finished five. I think I can definitely complete this this year. Um, one of my whip go goals for the year is to finish a project for each. Um, I have, one of my goals for the year is to finish a project for each season, spring, summer, or winter, and fall. So I have a block in whip go for each of those seasons. And this I believe will be my summer finished project, I hope. Um, I, I think, um, this will, I will maintain this as kind of a focus for a finished project each month when my whip goal goals are complete. Um, if there's extra time or days left in the month to try and, and get it done to get something out of my whip pile. I'm like back and forth on a regular basis between wanting to start all the things and wanting to cut my whip pile in half because I feel overwhelmed. We're planning on moving this year, and it will be easier to move um, if I can finish up some things uh, and uh, put them in my under the bed box rather than them taking space being kitted up. But we'll we'll see how that goes. I mean, I keep buying and starting things, so <laughs> uh, yeah. So this was the last thing I worked on in February. I have some stash to show you. I didn't purchase a whole lot in the past couple of months, but I have purchased a couple of things. So first of all, I got this chart from Tiny Modernist. I believe I ordered this from Lovecrafts. I was purchasing some yarn because I was running out of uh, red yarn for my red, yellow, and blue scarf. So I purchased um, the yellow yarn and blue yarn for that scarf from Lovecrafts, which is a company I hadn't ordered from before. And I was pretty happy with their the speed of their shipping and how things came packaged. But I didn't, you know, um, you can't just order a couple skeins of yarn. You can't just order a couple skeins of anything. You know, if you're gonna order a skein of something, you might as well get a chart. And Lovecrafts also sells cross-stitch charts. So I noticed at the time this was on sale and I hadn't seen it before. This is Tiny Modernist Folk Art Sampler. I believe this was um, a release last year for Nashville. But I hadn't seen this before on one, two, three, or I don't think I've actually seen anybody stitch this. So um, and I thought it was really cute. I really like the combination of the pinks and the greens and the blues. There's not too many colors in it, and it's not that big. It's, uh, what is that, 99 by 104? That's pretty good. Not huge. So I look forward to starting this maybe this spring. Maybe this would be a good kind of Easter start if I do an Easter start. It's got the bunnies there. 
I also needed to order a couple skeins of DMC from 123 Stitch, and um, you know, you're not just gonna order a skein of thread. Like, um, I mean, I guess you can, but why? So one of one of the things I ordered to come along with my DMC was this lavender and lace chart, Mother's Tree. I've always liked this chart, and now that I have a daughter, I would really like to stitch it. I think I'm going to start it this year on Mother's Day. So if you'd like to stitch along with me, um, let me know. Feel free. Just so you know, I have a horrible habit of starting cells and then completely ghosting them. But if that doesn't bother you, and you have a daughter or you just want to stitch this chart, uh, feel free to start it with me on Mother's Day. I think several of us in the floss tube community had babies this year, and I think quite a few of us had girls, actually, now that I think about it. So, you know, Mother's Day, new start, anyone? And the last chart I purchased is this long dog. Had to do a couple retakes there. Who else says something different instead of dog every time they go to say long dog samplers? Um, so I purchased this long dog, <laughs> which I have no business doing because I have not yet completed the other long dog or any of the samplers that are giant that I'm working on, but I have always liked this one. It's called Arcade. The saying in it I really like, cares of tomorrow can wait until this day is done, which is a nice saying for those of us who suffer from a bit of anxiety, I think. So um, I believe it's the white part that's, I suppose you could do it either way. The white part is stitched and then the dark part is fabric, but I suppose you could swap it if you wanted. Um, you know, like many of her designs, uh, I don't think that there's actually a color suggested for this chart. And, you know, I'll, I'm planning on doing it monochromatic. I purchased for it on eBay some 40 count linen in the colorway Lagoon. I believe this is just kind of like a standard Swigart linen. It's pretty, pretty nice. It's a dark teal color. I'm going to do the stitching, I think, in like a white or a cream color. I've pulled a couple different threads of DMC for it, but I haven't really settled. I mean, there's so many different colors of white. <laughs> so that's, that's my plan. I'm hoping to start this this year as well. I'm planning to start a lot of things this year, which is completely against my goal of finishing a lot of things, but there you have it. What else is new? Okay, so that is everything that I have worked on up until the beginning of March. Um, it was nice to catch up with you guys. I'm going to throw this together and uh, try and get some sort of edit out of it. Please do let me know if the sound quality still sucks um, and I will figure out something for the next vlog. I'm going to try and get better about recording clips as I work on things now that our lives have settled down a little bit and things are a little bit more mellow around here. So hopefully it won't be too long before I connect with you guys again. I am super behind on floss tube, I but I have been keeping up with you all on Instagram and cheering on your progress. Um, even if you haven't heard from me, I just want you to know I'm thinking about you and um, I love seeing everything you're all working on. Many of you have had some incredible finishes already this year and um, are inspiring me to work towards my goals. So that's it for now and I will see you guys hopefully sometime in March or April. Thanks so much for stopping by.